Josh Fox is a popular filmmaker that's also a vocal advocate for protecting the environment. He's been on MSNBC and CNN multiple times to talk about his opposition to oil pipelines and fracking. And he used to go on MSNBC almost weekly. And he explains that once he became a Bernie Sanders surrogate, well, mainstream media outlets began to treat him differently. I was a regular on MSNBC. I was a regular on Chris Pays' show. I would go on every couple of weeks. You know, this was just part of life as the me being able to talk about fracking and pipelines and these kinds of things, you know. And I love that. I love that about my life. I love being able to go on. I love to talk to Chris. I love to talk to uh, Larry O'Donnell and the other uh, people at the, uh, you know, Morning Joe or whatever it was, Alex Wagner, who would have me on all the time to talk about these issues. And then all of a sudden I became a Bernie Sanders surrogate and, and psh, phone stopped ringing, 100%. And I'm like, what's going on here? This is really weird. And then I put out a movie on climate change. Uh, how to let go of the world and love all the things climate can't change on HBO, touring the, the whole country. So I think it's my best work. It was at Sundance Film Festival. And I'm not getting on MSNBC at all. Wow. And I call them up and I said, what's going on? And then I started snooping in there. And as it turns out, there was definitely a blacklist at MSNBC. There was a, a real emphasis on making sure that Hillary Clinton was in the spotlight, that Bernie was downplayed. Uh, MSNBC ran the story. Um that the primaries were over the night before the last primary, if you recall. In California. That they said, oh, Hillary Clinton has won the nomination. You know, this is like, what is this, El Salvador? You're going to call the election the night before the election? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where, where are we? 80, are we in Buenos Aires in 1982? Like, what's going on here? So, like, that was MSNBC. That was MSNBC. MSNBC was doing that. And it was very clear. Like, And, in fact, the ultimate irony of the whole thing episode is that when I'm putting out my movie, my movie premieres on HBO on the same night as Climate Week starts on MSNBC. Wow. And I don't get asked to go on and talk about the movie. My publicist was tearing her hair out. She's like, I have no idea what's going on. I do not know what's going on. Meanwhile, we went to the internet. We went to Now This. We went to AJ Plus, and we got millions and tens of millions of views on short films about the film, and the film became one of the highest rated uh, HBO premieres of the year. Mm-hmm. And we did it without television because we couldn't get on MSNBC. We couldn't get on, uh, aside from Jake Tapper, um, CNN. So, in fact, when Susan wanted to, me to go on MSNBC, I had to call her and said, look, you know, I don't think they like me. They're going to have me on. <laughs> you know? And she was like, really? And I was like, yeah, yeah, well, just, just, just see what you can do. Just try, you know? <laughs> so the day of, they're giving her all this stuff, heaven and hawing. No, we don't, we don't have enough time to have you and Josh on. We just want to have you on. And so Susan just did the, one of the most amazing and honorable and noble things that anyone's ever, ever done for me, which is say no to them if they wouldn't put me on. She said, well, I'm not going on it without, without wow. trust. Then fine. And no one has done that. You know, that's, that's a lot, you know, to turn down a TV appearance and stuff like, you know, just because of a friend, you know, because cool. they're, they're doing a friend sort of wrong. So I end up having a conversation with them and talk to Chris and look, come on, let's patch it up. Let's have Let's have lunch. Let's talk these things through. And come on. So uh, hopefully we're going to have a lunch. Yeah. Hopefully I'll have lunch with Chris. And we'll start to see this. But the truth of the matter is, MSNBC is culpable in the election of Donald Trump. They are. Far more culpable. They are culpable in in giving the nomination to Hillary Clinton. They are culpable in journalistic malpractice. And they owe people an apology. And they're losing viewers because of it. So this, to me, I think is a bombshell. They blacklisted him because he was a Bernie Sanders surrogate. The mainstream media is supposed to report the facts. They're not supposed to have an agenda. And yet, you see them blacklisting people who dare to go against the political establishment. I want to read his quote. He said, There was definitely a blacklist on MSNBC. There was a real emphasis on making sure Hillary Clinton was in the spotlight that Bernie Sanders was downplayed. And CNN is also culpable because he said that they wouldn't allow him on too, with the exception of Jake Tapper. I mean, this isn't too surprising, honestly, but it's egregious nonetheless to actually hear it from someone. This is sickening. MSNBC should be ashamed of themselves. How dare they call themselves a progressive network? We know that they are just the the propaganda wing of the Democratic Party, and this really proves it right here. The Democratic establishment wanted Hillary Clinton, and anyone who got in the way, they tried to bulldoze, and MSNBC worked to do the bidding of the Democratic Party establishment. Well, then you're not a real media outlet. 
media is supposed to be a check on government authority. That's why sometimes we refer to the media as the fourth branch of government, even though it's not technically an arm of government. It's supposed to be a check on government power. You weren't a check on government authority. You allowed this oligarch, Hillary Clinton, to be the center of attention because that's who the party establishment decided they would anoint as the Democratic Party nominee. It's ridiculous. And he said here, MSNBC is culpable in the election of Donald Trump. They are culpable in giving the nomination to Hillary Clinton. They are culpable in journalistic malpractice. And look, Bernie Sanders supporters, we were rightfully horrified at the fact that they were not covering Bernie Sanders nearly enough. I mean, this isn't just MSNBC, but CNN literally aired empty podiums of Donald Trump rather than covering actual rallies from Bernie Sanders. It, it was mind-blowing. They gave Donald Trump $2 billion in free media coverage, and they gave Bernie Sanders nothing. There was basically a blacklist, and now we're confirming that it wasn't just an effective blacklist. It was a literal blacklist of anyone who supported Bernie Sanders. And media has a lot of power in this country. They have agenda-setting power. They have the power to kill off a candidate by not covering him or her. So they don't even have to smear Bernie Sanders, even though they did do that whenever they infrequently covered him. But so long as they just ignore a candidate, that can kill off his or her campaign. And this isn't just my opinion. This is backed up by decades of political science research. So there's a study here that's widely cited by Dr. Chantal Iyengar, and Donald Kinder, and they basically found out that the media has three primary powers. They can set the government's agenda by covering certain topics. They can influence the criteria with which people evaluate information. So if they talk about something enough, like Benghazi, they can prime you and get you to think that this is the more salient issue than the other political issues. And they also can literally sway the outcomes of elections by legitimizing and delegitimizing candidates based on the level of coverage that they give to them. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but you can look up this study. If you uh, go to a university, your campus should have access to their study uh, that became a book later on. I'll link to the book in the description box. But this is why when Bernie Sanders supporters talk about Bernie Sanders getting coverage and we talk about there needing to be more debates, it's so that way the playing field was equal. And yet... Hillary Clinton supporters have the audacity to claim that we're crazy, that the primary wasn't rigged. Yeah, the primary was rigged, not only by the DNC, but the media, the corporate media establishment that was doing the bidding of their corporate donors who did not want Bernie Sanders to get in and rein them in. You know, this, when you consider that, you know, Josh Fox is totally right. They are culpable in the election of Donald Trump. And I hope that every pundit that pushed for Hillary Clinton at the behest of the Democratic Party establishment and tried to vilify and demonize Bernie Sanders and his supporters, I hope you feel guilty. So when you talk about Donald Trump, when you put pressure on Donald Trump, know that you are responsible for Donald Trump. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.